Hello and welcome to Crosstalk International. I'm Josh Weiss. And I'm Elijah Weiss. And uh, today we're going to be kicking off a brand new series. It's a four-part series on, uh, what's the title again? Know Your Purpose and God's Three Rules of Money. Know Your Purpose, God's Three Rules for Money. This is going to be a great series. If you happen to miss any of it, you can always find it on social, on the website, on YouTube. But uh, during this series, you're going to get three generations of Weisses. So stay tuned. I'm going to throw it to Dad, and we're going to have a great series. Shalom, shalom. Greetings and peace. My name is Randy Weiss. I am a Jewish believer in the Jewish Messiah. I want to welcome you to another edition of Crosstalk. If you believe in the Messiah, this program will challenge you in a good way. And if you come from a different faith background, we can still be friends even if we don't agree. But be aware that my beliefs will be reflected herein. And my goal is to help others who do believe to gain a firmer grip on their faith so that the source of their faith, our living God, will have a solid hold on their lives and families. If you believe differently, stick around anyway. You never know how these things end. But as I have a confession that I need to make, I want to get started by saying I have been feeling a bit restless. Kind of similar feelings may be bugging you too, whether it's because of the news, the climate on social media, or maybe just the state of the world in general. For one reason or another, I don't want to get too comfortable with today because it feels like changes are coming tomorrow. Now, if you're new to the program, I usually try to present interesting facts from Jewish culture or church history. Of course, the Bible is always on the agenda, and sometimes I share about the Hebraic connection to the ancient church. Our focus is often on the Middle East, Although through our work with the Today with God project, we do also reach into Islamic, Hindu, and Buddhist localities. The world is full of interesting views about God. We have our own and we try to share them respectfully and responsibly. And sometimes we learn from those with whom we disagree. At least we gain more understanding about the world in which we live as we dialogue. It's also a great way to gain new views about the ever-changing stage that we share in the marketplace of ideas. Our goal is always to help believers become credible Christian witnesses. And in today's program, I will challenge you to find your purpose. <laughs> I want you to think about that. You know, if you don't know your place in God's plan, well, that's on you. It's not on God. You can, and you should know your purpose. I've been trying to gain a, a better understanding of my own place, and for that reason, I must relate a recent personal dialogue that I experienced with God. As with any dialogue, I only did part of the talking. You see, I have been facing some trials. The specifics are not terribly relevant, so I won't bore you with the details. I just hope that this confession will help some other folks who may also be struggling right now, feeling maybe a little bit restless. <laughs> I hope it'll be of some help. So with that odd preface out of the way, I will explain that during the last few months, God has been trying to teach me some things about money, both the lack of money, the pursuit of money, and the purpose of money have been on my mind. In any academic process, one's attention is required to learn. Well, God has been using circumstances in my life to gain more of my attention. I've been acutely aware of his desire to draw me closer to himself. I've also become more aware of my inability to take the required steps to gain more faith on my own. I want more faith so I can become stronger. Now, faith is a funny thing. The weaker we become on our own, the stronger our faith can grow. Conversely, the stronger we grow in this world, the weaker we become in our pursuit of the next. Yes, 
I believe in two worlds. The one I currently inhabit will not be mine for long. The next one will last forever. And it is that one for which I want to be prepared and to which I want to send my treasures ahead for enduring returns. It is into that world that I want to make fruitful investments. Sadly, it is this very temporary world that consumes much of my attention. This world dominates most of my thinking and distracts me from the higher purpose to which I am called. By the way, don't look at the color of my hair and assume that when I say this world won't be mine for long, that it means if your hair color is less gray than mine, that it means your time in this world is much longer than mine. In fact, it might be not much longer than anyone else's. Each of us is one breath away from the next world. The better question is what fuels your passion for each remaining moment while you still have a heartbeat? Do you know your purpose? Are you pursuing it with a sense of urgency? Time here is short regardless of what you believe. And that is why God calls us to a higher purpose. His purpose for our lives can often seem elusive, yet that is the purpose that matters most, regardless of your religion. I think people of every faith want to please God. Muslims, Hindus, Buddhists, Jews, Christians, and others. We all desire to find God's will for our lives in one way or another, and we all want to pursue the Lord's higher purposes. I mean, if we have some sense of who God is and we find value in who he is and we want to please him. We all want to transcend the bare minimums of survival. None of us want to remain enslaved to our lowest, near animal-like instincts. As human beings, with God's spark of life lit within each of our bosoms, I hope there is at least a thread of desire in each of us to gain some mastery over our most selfish, almost inhuman tendencies. One familiar concept that might be relevant in such a discussion is that of carrying our cross. You know, in the Christian worldview, we're reminded that Jesus spoke passionately and compassionately about carrying our crosses. Paul spoke convincingly about dying to ourselves so that Christ would live through us. Jesus was despised and suffered while engaged in the most humanitarian gesture in history. He endured death on the cross as a substitutionary sacrifice so that we could have life on the other side of it. Jesus was hated and executed by the system that should have more appropriately welcomed him. But instead of comfort and acceptance, he found persecution and rejection. Jesus instructed his followers to prepare for the same type of negative reception that he received. Our natural instinct is to make a way for ourselves in this world and to prepare for our best future right here, right now. Yet, Scripture teaches us to expect a different outcome on this side of eternity. The Bible suggests we should be like Moses. He was the star of the Exodus account. Moses was fully dependent on God for everything, from his daily manna to the military victories that spared Israel from destruction. Moses was a stranger in a strange land. His story should remind us that this world is not our home, yet our inclination is to invest our life pursuing the things of this world. We act as though we want to own it, control it, and leave a legacy in it for our loved ones. I mean, how odd. Because if we know the Lord, we understand that He's told us we're to be pilgrims and strangers in this world. Somehow, one worldview must simply give way to another. Ours must be exchanged for His. It's only then that we can live out our lives in faith 
and it is only in dying, after having lived rather selflessly, that we preserve the richest, lasting legacy for those we leave behind. That is how we gain treasures in heaven that will go before us and outlast anything we build during our time on earth. Here is where we are to live in faith and to send our treasures ahead to an eternal world. Yet here is where we are made to feel like unwelcome squatters when we live in this world as servants of the king of another world. It can be confusing. It can also be, well, painful to our flesh. When we exercise our faith and we live for God instead of living for our earthly passions, that can be confrontational in this fallen world. Yet living for God is the holy purpose to which each believer is called. Let me remind you that it will always hurt more when Dr. God puts us on a diet or exercise program of his choosing because our spiritual health requires certain meaningful changes that we refuse to prescribe for ourselves. But when our faith is tested, when we experience challenging trials to perfect our faith, instead of grumbling and complaining, the cry of the mature Christians should be heard as our praise to our faithful God. Somehow we're called to give thanks in everything, even the hard things. We are to live as though we understand that God knows what he's doing and he does all things well. He loves us. He's good at what he does. We can trust him. Now, one thing at which God excels is purifying those whom he loves. Sometimes he uses the crucible. A crucible is a device in which precious metals are placed to have the impurities removed through the application of purifying fire by a qualified refiner. Life is a crucible. It is in this crucible that our impure motives, our selfish desires, and our ungodly attitudes are purged. The Apostle Peter understood this very well. He wisely informed believers what to expect in this world, telling them that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. If we believe that Peter spoke the truth, it is certainly understandable why so many of us are not comfortable with our testings. Some of us spend time with the refiner at work in his crucible. As we approach such a test and we look at the crucible, we see the fire, we fear the heat, we resent the burning that purifies. So what about God's purpose and finding it for our lives? Well, many of us pray that our faith would be strengthened, our vision enlarged, and the knowledge of God's love expanded to make us more fruitful in our service. Still, we get terribly disappointed when we pray for air-conditioned comfort and receive unbearable heat. Yet it is heat that serves a far greater purpose than comfort. The crucible of life is where our faiths, it's made pure, it's, it's, it's fixed because sometimes our faith is broken and it needs repair. Our life needs purification. This is the precious reality of faith that will never fill a conference hall or assure big money book deals with profitable sequels. People don't want to build their faith at the cost of their comfort. We value comfort more than just about anything. And I understand this all too well because I enjoy comfort just like you do. But as with unrefined precious metals, without the heat of a burning fire, there is no way to melt away the dross and create the true value of purity. Without purification, we cannot be prepared to serve the higher purpose to which we are called. If you are in the refiner's fire right now, don't fear. On the other side is peace and purpose. Have you found the will of God 
for your life. Do you know your eternal purpose? Are you seeking it? I promise you that God wants our lives to be purified so that we can be useful and filled with purpose in his perfect plan for the ages. But we need to remain flexible. (laughs) God wants to mold us to achieve his wonderful goals for our lives. And I want to help you find your purpose. Do you know why you were born? Do you know what the Lord has prepared you to accomplish? Do you know your purpose? If so, get after it. If not, stay tuned. The mission of Today with God is to spread the gospel around the world. Thousands of lives have already been touched by the love of Jesus through this Bible video project, but so many more need to see, hear, and understand the love of God. And that is why we translated this project into the top 11 languages of India. Countless of millions of more souls now have access to these Bible films in their native tongue. But we need God's help and your help. That comes through prayer. Will you join us on this humbling journey and pray that we can complete this enormous task? Our team is in India where over a hundred pastors have been trained to distribute the Today With God project to the nation. But hundreds more and even thousands more need the training and the tools to go forward. We need God and we need your prayers. Now more than ever, the Word of God must be seen. That is why Today with God exists in the native languages of the nation of India. Most importantly, that is why we are excited to announce the launch of our Today with God mobile app. It's coming soon and we want to bring it to your language. Scan the QR code to let us know you're praying with us and we'll bless you with a free gift to show our gratitude. We thank you in advance for your prayers. Welcome back to Crosstalk. My name is Randy Weiss and I have a question for you. Has God ever taken you out back? I don't mean out for dinner at an Australian themed steakhouse. I mean, has the Lord ever taken you to the woodshed? In my case, God corrected a misplaced focus in my life. It was not his desire to hurt me. It was only to help me. When I refuse to allow the Word of God to be my teacher, God sends the Holy Spirit to help me understand what I've been missing in His lesson plan. If I then choose to ignore both His Word and His Spirit, well, God brings more understandable object lessons from the school of hard knocks to ensure that I get the message and retain the understanding that the lesson was intended to teach me. Is your life a little like my life? Have you ever had the experience when the headmaster found it expedient to apply the Board of Education to the seat of knowledge to ensure your higher education was received at a lower level than a pat on the back could produce? In other words, sometimes were you best served by a good swift kick in the pants to learn a valuable lesson. In a world of no-fault insurance, no-fault accidents, no-fault divorces, and participation trophies for all, there is not much room for personal responsibility. Yet I'm here to tell you, you have some responsibility. Nevertheless, I am assured that my God loves me and He has made me His own. I got a scholarship in sonship. You can have one too. My Heavenly Father revealed His love by correcting me as He promised He would do for all of His children. For whom the Lord loves, He chastens and scourges every son whom He receives. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is He whom the Father chastens not? But if ye be without chastening, 
whereof all are partakers, then are ye. Well, you're a monster. Bastards and not sons. I guess I should mention that under Jewish law, there's much written about momsers or fatherless children. That's a Hebrew word. But I want to encourage every faithful Christian that we are not in that category. Now, I must say that in our modern culture, I'm glad that much of the stigma from being in single parent families and even the children of illicit unions have been reduced. God loves you. The church should love you. The world may hate you because, well, the world is really not a loving place. But still, I must mention that there is no such thing as a fatherless child. There's certainly a father in every union. It is just that some fathers are selfish, shiftless sinners unwilling to assume their moral, social, legal, or financial responsibility. Others perish before having a chance to be honorable. And above all, God wants to be our Father. So whatever your family condition, as believers in our Messiah, we are all adopted into God's family. And I can promise you that our Heavenly Father loves each of us and He is faithful to provide all the teaching we need to walk in a manner that will lead to our blessing and to His pleasure. So as I alluded to, God has taken me out back. He wanted my attention. He wanted to ensure that I learned some simple lessons in a manner that would leave an indelible impression on me. Like every good father, he corrects us. <laughs> when correction is required, he brings it. It's because we need it. Now, praise God. In my case, it was a simple finance lesson. God wanted me to understand something about money. It may be a lesson that someday you will also need to learn. Maybe if you pay attention to this message, it will save you some personal pain. Perhaps you can avoid experiencing your own attitude adjustment by learning from the attitude adjustment that was kindly given to me by my Heavenly Father. God really wanted me to understand these issues because in so doing it was intended to prepare me for whatever he might want to choose for my life and for my family in the future. Now, it's a simple rule that I learned, and I want to teach you this rule. This will be for your own good, I promise you. Write it down. It's easy to remember. God's money rule number one. It's never about the money. It's always about the decision. <laughs> now, that may sound simple. But I'm telling you what, it's profound. It's profound, it's meaningful, it's deep. I think that rule needs some explanation because I don't want anyone to misunderstand or read anything into this that is unwarranted. There was no personal failure or ministry crisis that brought this revelation into the light for me to see. I did not succumb to any horrifying temptation or yield to some base instinct that could not be discussed on national television. Actually, it was simply living out the call of God that brought me to this conclusion. Oh yeah, God did back me into a corner, but as always, He did it because He loves me. Sometimes God shows His love, not in providing abundance, but rather in restricting our ability to act as we think best when it conflicts with His perfect will. Remember, God has a plan for the ages. We each have a, a place in that plan. We serve a purpose in God's salvation plan of the ages. That's the primary reason we should never solve what we think are financial problems with credit cards. Sometimes, a plastic solution is simply a disapproved end run around the will of God. In any case, our finances did get scarcer than the proverbial hen's tooth. And since hens do not have teeth, you can understand how lean that can be. Of course, at the same time, we were plagued with financial demands in many directions. Listen to me. Every family, every business, and every ministry must address money concerns. 
Oftentimes we make choices based upon our lack of money or on our available resources. And look, I, I don't want your money. In fact, I want to thank those of you who listened to the Lord and obeyed God by not sending a contribution. I bet you never thought you would hear that from a TV preacher. You heard that right. We appreciate those of you who don't give your money, not because we don't want it, but because we want you to listen to God and what he has for you, not just because we want it or need it. Yeah, I think a lot of times people, uh, they're not used to that message on Christian TV. <laughs> no, for sure. Uh, it's not to say that we're, we're not, we're still a nonprofit. We still rely on the, the donations of those who feel the Lord leading but it's more important that you feel the Lord leading whatever you do than it is that you, you know, just act in what might seem like the move that we would want, so. Definitely, our, our purpose is to listen to the will of God. We want that to be your purpose as well. Um, this episode talked about a lot of different things, but one of the main things that he touched on was, do you know your purpose? And not only do you know your purpose, but are you pursuing it? Yeah, a, a lot of times people, they, they begin to go through the life process and you, you know, life has a way of becoming a little bit mundane where you've got a job and you become identified or you identify yourself with your vocation. And as a result of that, your purpose sometimes becomes something that's driven by whatever your job is, whatever your yeah. boss is you know, telling you this is what you've got to accomplish today or whatever. And in reality, that's not our purpose. That's a vocation. Yeah. We need to know our purpose and make sure that we're pursuing after that. Yeah, and just like my grandfather said, sometimes you need an attitude adjustment. Sometimes God has to back you in the corner like he did for him and show you that, hey, this is not where you're supposed to be going and kind of re retrace your steps and push you back in the right direction. That's good. Knowing your purpose helps with that attitude adjustment because it's a perspective change. Yeah. So that's, that's good. That's good stuff. Yeah, and, and then the, one of the main things that this series talks about is the, God's rules of money. And we learned today God's first rule of money, which is that it's never about the money, always about the decision. Yeah. Money's just a vehicle. It's just a tool that's able to be used to fulfill whatever the purpose is or to move forward in what God's calling you to. And so, like we said, this is the first episode of this four-part series. And of course, you're going to want to come back uh, for the next episode so you can get point two of God's three, three rules for money. And so come back next time. If you miss anything, you could certainly catch us on social media. Just search at Crosstalk TV. Yeah, we spend a lot of time on our social media to make sure that you guys are able to, to get those little pieces from my grandfather all throughout your week, all throughout your day. Just little bits of encouragement that you can just feel uplifted throughout your day. So I would encourage you, if you're ever feeling down, go follow us on social medias or YouTube at Crosstalk TV just to find a little bit of encouragement in your day. You can catch us online at Crosstalk TV. Dot org, And of course, you can always reach us by the phone, 1-800-688-3422. If you feel like sending a contribution, if the Lord leads you, you can do it by mail also. P.O. Box 2528, Cedar Hill, Texas, 75106. Till next time, God bless.